So here we are in chapter 13. And chapter 13 is about the age of science and exploration. Section 1 is about the scientific revolution. And uh, today we'll discuss about the roots of revolution. I think at this point you know the drill. Have your textbook ready or go to our Loda USD website. And from there, Cengage Learning, from Clever to Cengage Learning, and log in with your student account. Chapter 13, The Age of Science and Exploration. Section 1, The Scientific Revolution. And today, we'll learn about the roots of revolution, and that is in pages 356 to 357. So revolution is not always violent and bloody. Today, we'll learn about the, this type of revolution that is more of an intellectual type of revolution. And it is something that radicalizes not uh, people to arms, but it radicalizes ideas that eventually change the way people think and approach the world or life in general. So for the essential question, the chapter's essential question is how did new ideas affect Europeans' views of the world? And the objective of this lesson is to describe how Europeans answered scientific questions by relying on the works of the ancient Greek thinkers and medieval Muslim scholars. The period following the Middle Ages was one of the major changes in Europe. The Renaissance brought an explosion of creativity in art, literature, and architecture. The Reformation transformed people's religious ideas, created even nation-states like the United States. Another important movement introduced great advances in science. This movement is called the Scientific Revolution, and it began in Europe around mid-1500s. So the main idea of this lesson is that before the scientific revolution, Europeans generally rely on the works of the Greek thinkers and medieval Muslim scholars to answer scientific questions. Early scientists called themselves natural philosophers, and their methods differed greatly from those of modern scientists who uses observation, for example, uses other technology that relies on empirical or systematic a way of gathering evidence. The ancient Greeks were great thinkers, and they often based their scientific explanations on reasoning rather than evidence. Indeed, some famous Greek philosophers rejected the need for scientific experiments. They believed that if there are enough clever people who are thinking the same way, the same thing, they would discover the truth. These beliefs led to some incorrect theories. Well, what is a theory? A theory is a proposed explanation for a set of uh, facts. For example, two Greek thinkers, Aristotle on the left side and Ptolemy on the right side of the screen, promote a geocentric theory. What is this geocentric theory? It places Earth at the center of the universe. Well, according to this theory, the sun, moon, planets, and everything moved in circular path around Earth. This theory later supported the Christian belief that God had created Earth at the center of the universe. So obviously, even though the theory was wrong, it influenced scientific ideas about the universe for hundreds of years. Well, obviously, not every time they got it wrong. There are great philosophers, great thinkers. Well, Aristotle and Ptolemy themselves are great thinkers, but of course, they can't be right all the time. For example, Greek mathematicians like Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, uh, they all develop theories on which modern mathematics is based. Well, before we move on, by the way, here's the picture of um, an illustration of how um, the geocentric theory is um, illustrated or portrayed. As you can see in this illustration, the earth is in the center and it looks like there's an illustration of how everything revolves around it. As you can see, the sun is included here and other illustrations as well that are really not very clear. Now let's talk about who contributed to this accomplishments or who made this thing possible. 
So these are the medieval Muslim scholars. So after the collapse of the Roman Empire in 476 AD, most classical knowledge was lost to Western Europe. Between 600s and 1100s, Muslim scholars studied Greek scientific theories and combined them with ideas from other regions. For example, in India, they adopted such mathematical concepts as decimal system, the number zero and the 10 Arabic numerical commonly used today. By bringing together learning from different cultures, Muslim scholars advance mathematical understanding. Muslim scholars also made significant advances in astronomy. They developed special buildings called observatories for studying the stars. So these buildings had scientific instruments that allowed astronomers to accurately plot the location of the stars. As a result, scientists were able to develop more accurate calendars and methods of navigations. So the advanced knowledge of the Muslims spread throughout this, their vast empire and beyond, eventually reaching Western Europe after 1200s. So beginning in the 1500s, European scientists combined the knowledge with new technologies and the willingness to challenge the long-accepted ideas. So this action sparked the revolution of uh, the scientific revolution or the revolution in scientific thinking. So to summarize the roots of the revolution, well, first, uh, with the Greek thinkers or Greek scientists, they are called natural philosophers. They are the ones who started it all, but because of the fall of the Roman Empire, this vast knowledge that were stored in uh, recorded uh, materials were somehow lost. And the medieval Muslim scholars were able, able to revive them combine them with other knowledge from other cultures such as India and China, and they combine all this information and put together a system that uh, eventually benefited not only Western uh, European um, countries or nations, eventually it affected or influenced the rest of the world. Now let's go to the review and assess questions. Now let's go to the review and assess questions. Number one, reading check. What sources of knowledge did scholars turn to before the scientific revolution? And number two, determine word meanings. How do the roots of the words geocentric and observatory help clarify their meanings? What's the meaning of the word geo and observatory? What's the root word for that? Analyze cause and effect for number three. How did medieval Muslim scholars help advance the field of mathematics? Now go back to our Google Classroom and find the review and assess assignment for chapter 13, section one, the scientific revolution. Well, of course, you will need to fill in the basic information. Um, you should know this by now. Last name, first name, class period, and date. And the key vocab, just one key vocab, geocentric theory. And don't forget to write the title of the lesson. What's the title of the lesson that we just covered? And uh, of course, the answer to the review and assess questions on the right side. Write in complete sentences. Definitely, of course, obviously, you need to give the correct answers and write in complete sentences.